do you often get caught thinking that one day or once you get that new job, that new girlfriend, that new car, that new boyfriend, that whatever, then you'll be okay. Life will be okay when this thing happens. When we have a million subscribers on YouTube, I was gonna say, yeah. <laughs> life will be better. Or like when we get that person to, or when we find that topic or that person <laughs> right, or that right, guest, right, that right, right, then right. we'll get that million right, and then right. our life will be better. Right, right, right. Once we figure out what to talk about today, yeah, everything will be okay. Okay, so the, the question here is from the Daily Stoic book, yes. September 27th, What Will Prosperity Reveal? For even peace itself will supply more reason for worry. Not even safe circumstances will bring you confidence once your mind has been shocked. Once it gets in the habit of blind panic, it can't provide for its own safety. For it doesn't really avoid danger, it just runs away. Yet we are exposed to greater danger with our backs turned. All right. I'll read okay. The next part. Okay. There's an old proverb that money doesn't change people, it just makes them more of who they are. Robert Caro has written that power doesn't corrupt, it reveals. In some ways, prosperity, financial and personal, is the same way. If your mind has developed a certain caste, the habit of panicking, in Seneca's example, then it won't matter how good things get for you. You're still primed for panic. Your mind will still find things to worry about, and, you're, and you'll still be miserable, perhaps more so even because now you have more to lose. This is why it's foolish to hope for good fortune. If you were to hope for one thing, you could hope for the strength of character that's able to thrive in good fortune, or better, work for that kind of character and confidence. Consider every action and every thought. Think of them as building blocks of your indestructible character. Then work to make each one strong and significant in its own right. So when I teach Tuesdays and Wednesdays at the University of Toronto, I I often like hmm, I'm not I'm still working through my thoughts here. Um, I I'm not always like confident that I'm doing a good job, and it makes me second guess. It make, it puts me into a bit of a bad mood. It makes me down. I wonder, am I smart enough to be in this job? Am I describing the things I want students to learn in a clear way. Do they think I'm smart enough to be here? Are they enjoying the class? Do they feel like they're better off dropping it and finding someone else? Do all their other classes, are there like magic shows and just these brilliant insights from these other professors and they come to my class and it's just like, you know, not that. So now why is that coming up when I read this? It's not so much from the Seneca quote about, I don't know what the Seneca quote meant just yet. I haven't figured that out. Um, it's something that comes in, I think, the third paragraph or in the second paragraph where like, if you're, if you're in a habit of doing something, it's not gonna, then your objective reality actually won't change that attitude. You'll just continue to panic. So if I am always thinking negative thoughts about myself, regardless of how well I do in a class or how well I do on a teaching evaluation or if I get a promotion, all of which think those things have happened, I'll still be in the habit of um, bel belittling myself, whatever the word is. I'll be in the words here. I I'm still primed for intense panic. self. It's it's not panic. No, but it, yeah, not panic in a oh my god, oh my god, but like in a in a self ruminatory. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and it's it does make me. I wouldn't say it makes me miserable, but it doesn't make me. Ha it doesn't make me better. It doesn't make me happy. It doesn't give me energy. It doesn't make me feel like powerful. And yeah, hey, I can I can do this stuff. So the last, the third paragraph here really resonated in the sense that I need to be very mindful. Consider every action, every thought of them as building blocks of your own indestructible character. So I want to. Like one thing that helps me get out of this feeling of like, oh, I'm not good enough is, okay, how do I make next week's class something I'm proud of? Like, how do I commit myself right now to thinking clearly about what I'm going to do, what the lecture is going to be about, how I prepare, how I understand the material, what my slides look like, X, Y, Z. So what can I control? I can't really control what students think of it. I can control my level of prep, my attitude, my enthusiasm. So trying to just shake out of it, shrug my shoulders a bit. 
saying I have a heart or for me, it's a heart. I like the job. I'm well designed for it, but I, I do find it, it hard and I'm exposed. Mike, I was telling you this before I'm exposed. I'm vulnerable. It's so easy to judge someone who's up there, right? Standing in front of a ton of students, but I can't dwell on that. I just need to sort of shrug my shoulders at the, the harsh reality of the job. It's, it's not a harsh, re- it's just a, it's a challenging reality. And then to say, okay, how do I make myself prepared and ready and really control what I can control? Not, I can't control student perceptions. I can't control what they're interested in. I can control the level of care and enthusiasm I put into, the, into my next lesson plan. So I think that's what resonated here for me. I'm not sure that's consistent with what Seneca is talking about, but the idea of considering every action and every thought as building blocks for my, industri- in my indestructible character, that, that hit me. So that's, that resonated. What I'm thinking about right now is your mind will still find things to worry about. And if you're listening to this, what is the nature of your particular worry? So you described mm-hmm. a little bit of yours. We all have a, a nature to our worry. And maybe it depends on the situation. The insight, I guess, or the self-reflective contemplation is, you know, what is the nature of your panic or whatever? So it doesn't matter. There's, a, there's the John Kabat-Zinn book, wherever you go, there you are. A similar thing here. So whether you're rich, poor, in between, that internal narrative is still going to play itself out. And we want to separate our life circumstance from our internal experience. And obviously they have a they have a relationship. The idea here of consider every action and every thought. Uh, I think sometimes this is a bit kind of like too much, right? Like the, the the sort of Buddhist in me is like, okay, slow down everybody. Like mm. You don't have to obsess over every action and every thought right. and you don't have to work and, you know, strive. And, uh, you know, I, I find the, the, what would you call them? Stoic philosophers actually mean by a lot of this stuff. I think it's just interpreted that way by many people, right. including Ryan Holiday, although I've never asked him those questions, so I can't per se know. So back to what is the nature of your particular worry? And what's the story that you tell yourself about making that go away? Right. So if I just give the best lecture, then the next lecture I won't worry anymore. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or ah, say you go home today and you get an email from Harvard or Yale. You know, David. We heard. You, it. Yeah, yeah. We heard your. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're invited to give a guest lecture series at Yale or whatever. Right, you're gonna panic more, right. probably, right? Which is what's implied yeah. in this reading, and so that's a good example of the distinction between we think these things that we get or will acquire are going to save us or fix us or make our worries go away, yeah. but that's not the case, that's just not how our minds work. So, um can I, two small points. Yeah. So on the structure of my worry, just not not yeah, to make yeah, this yeah, about no, myself, no, but I guess we're because, going to. Yeah, we, yeah. I my big worry, and then I enough. have a second point. And my yeah. my big worry is I'm not being helpful. That's the that is the yes. I worry about not sounding smart, not being perceived as smart. I would say that's secondary. I'm sort of okay. if someone said, "Oh yeah, he's he's okay and intelligent." I actually wouldn't be so bugged by that for some reason. I'm, I don't know why. Mm-hmm. I think I would, I'm more bugged by, oh yeah, he's not giving us useful advice. I, I am so, I am very worried. I will say that I would, I'm very worried about being a teacher and for students seeing me as not useful for their own intellectual and skill development. That's a major concern. Okay. And so if you're not seen as useful, then what is it that you believe about yourself? This that's a therapy question to some extent, but <laughs> so if I, yeah, right. Yeah, if, so if it's true, if, yeah, I'm not, if it's true, right. Yeah. Then I'm not, I'm not the, I'm not the person that people are better off for being around. Mm. And that's, that, that's the, t- the, the, the way I've always designed a class and led a class is like, okay, I want, and maybe this is part of the problem. I'm baking it into my thinking as opposed to just maybe, the, oh, yeah, let me put that thought aside about how do I address this? If I, I feel I don't want to waste their time, and I don't want to feel like they're wasting their money. It's like, oh, here we go, another 
another guy telling us crap we don't give right, a right, f right, about right. i hate like it's and i'm because i've been on the receiving end mm -hmm. and i don't want to provide that kind of product right and so there's a lot there's a lot of worry anxiety that comes with not being that because mm -hmm. it's a high mm -hmm. standard mm -hmm. Well, and I and never feel like I'm going I'm to meet it because some students will be like, oh, that was really useful. Other students are like, this is not useful. And our minds are wired to sit on that negative comment. Right. Um, or, or my mind will, will sit on that negative comment more than it will a positive one. Okay. And so, one helpful reflection is what's the opposite of that, I don't know, shortcoming or neurosis, right? I won't yeah. be good enough or I won't be perceived as valuable. Yeah. What does that show about you? In this context, indestructible character. So part of that worry is also an asset of yours. And what is that? So um, the asset is, you're right, there's a positive. Like what, like, so I know you asked this, we've spoken about this before. Yeah, What's yeah. the advantage of the negative thought you right, have? Right. Or, or yeah, what does it reveal about you that's admirable or a quality? Um, so I think deep down, I, I do really care. I, th I think I, I care. Mm -hmm. I care about the quality of my work and I want to be relevant and interesting and like we said, useful for those who are exposed to my personality mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, my, and my classes. So I think that drives me to produce. I never leave a class thinking, wow, that was a really bad idea. I didn't think about that. I wasn't prepared. That's never the top. It's always like, I don't know what they're thinking about me. Right. Um, so I think one thing, the, 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 neg the advantage of that negative thought is I'm always trying to think about how might this be useful for them as they see this class, not how necessarily as I would teach it, but what, what they would want. So I'm in this sort of like service provision mode. Mm -hmm. The benefit is I can actually do a really good job if I do things right. If I prepare correctly, if I'm, if I slept properly, if I'm ready to go caffeinated, all those things that one needs to do to really, you know. Show perform up. for two yeah. hours really show up yeah the cost of that is i'm seeking i'm 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 in their heads i'm trying to get in their heads i'm trying to get into a space that i can't get to yes yeah i'm never yes. going to get the answer yes. they're, they're yes. either students who are like oh yeah it makes sense and i can see it in their eyes i'm not sure if they're truthful or not yeah. because there's yeah. an incentive in class to be like oh yeah i get it right plus they're also many of them are quite nice and they don't want to tell me that they had no clue what i was talking about um, so I'm never going to get that info. Yes. Correct. And I think I just need to be, maybe be at peace with the uncertainty of the efficacy of my teaching. I'm never going to know because often it's private. Often we don't tell our teachers. How does the, how, how does yeah. the, how does the objective, what's it called? Student evaluations yeah. help you with that? Um, does it? Yeah, it does. It makes me feel better until, yeah. Like, so the overwhelming comments for my, say my first year class which is like 450 students was were, are positive like they're all like this is great you know yeah but then there's the you know the, the do you see the, the personal information of the feedback no no no, no it's all anonymous so, okay, but i see uh there's like a score and i'm like rated based on like yeah. the course average across the university at the pot across divisions the yeah, department yeah, yeah. nice and i do i do very well in that sense um it doesn't it doesn't put the worry away it doesn't satisfy me <laughs> and i and i read does a negative it do anything for you um it doesn't do nothing for me but it doesn't it, i wouldn't say it moves the needle in my in terms right. of my emotions right. i can i can no i would say if i'm being 100 yeah, honest yeah, yeah, with yeah. you because sometimes when i'm feeling sad about my abilities i'll go back to those avals to try to like remind myself that i'm not a horrible yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Piece, you know just i'm not yeah, bad yeah and it i don't think it it's not it's like doesn't work hmm. It doesn't, it doesn't know. Yeah. So just, even if I go back to an, a lovely yeah, email, yeah, students yeah. will give me cards and they'll like, you know, I'm not short on, I don't want to, I've never really been given a ton of nev negative feedback, but I still so much worry. Like it just doesn't, the positive yeah, just doesn't yeah, sit. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't, yeah, yeah. it's in one <laughs> eye and out the back of my head. Okay. And then that's it. That's good. So thank you for that. That's beautiful. Um, and we can learn so much from that. So I guess from a more philosophical perspective, or I don't even like the word mental health. It's not mental health. It's, it's psychology, you know, yeah. personal psychology, something like that. Yeah. Are you gonna I, I need to, I'm, I'm, okay. So one yeah. benefit 
Um, and Mike, you're, you're such a good, you're indulging me here and you're being yeah, a good listener. It. So it's it. actually helping me think through yeah, like what yeah. I need to de I'm so anchored to the student experience. Mm -hmm. And often when I, as I design a course, when I design a lecture, the student mind is so central to me. And I think that's good, but I need to, I need to separate myself. I need to like be indifferent to the student experience while as an outcome, but as a process. So, okay, so how, I'm not explaining this clearly. No, yeah. Process yeah. in terms of like course design, lesson design, student experience is on top of my mind. Okay. In terms of the outcome, how did that go? I can't possibly answer that question. I need to, I need to like de anchor or get rid of. Let go. Let go of yeah. that. Yeah. So, when I design a class, I'm like, all right, I'm going to try to make this as useful and clear and relevant for the students as possible. I never know if I'm actually going to get there. And, I don't even ask that question about whether I did. I just try to do my best right. to achieve that objective without knowing if I'm, if I'm ever going to yeah. achieve it. Yeah. Okay. So is that a productive, like how should, yeah. yeah. Let, let, let me try to kind of from a stoic or philosophical, you know, wisdom, philosophical perspective, because mm -hmm. they all really are the same principles, the same virtues or ethics. You know, the Buddhists have the, the Eightfold Path, right action, right speech, right, you know, like the Four Noble Truths, all these things. So they're very similar to the virtues and morals or ethics of a Stoic perspective. You described a lot of them, doing the best you can, taking it seriously, wanting to be of service. Those are the things you can control to some extent. And that's where our focus needs to be. You can simultaneously recognize the desire for it to be received well, right? For people to find it valuable, to not be criticized and shamed and, you know, have tomatoes thrown at you in class. Those are two separate things though, right? And so we want to be able to uh, like feel the separation of those things. So we can feel I'm dedicated to my craft. I'm working hard. I'm doing it to the best of my ability. What happens, happens. But it doesn't mean it won't impact you, right? So it's like we separate. I do everything I can. Mm -hmm. I throw it out there. However it's received, then I can respond to that. Or to my... Only through the feedback, though. Right. Not, not the dialogue with your own internal panic. Right. He uses the word panic. It's not really yeah, the right no, word here. Uh... Yeah. Worry, rumination, neuroses. So to separate those two things and to... For me, I guess I would say when I'm, I did a talk at a conference the other day in Muskoka for the Canadian Mental Health Association. Awesome. Yeah, it didn't quite, my perception is it didn't go well. I was a bit tired. I was coming off a cold. I haven't got feedback yet. I asked for it, uh, you know, whatever. But I think I know I didn't do as good as I could have done. But when I when I am in a place where I'm doing well, my focus is, is sort of centered in, did I follow my understanding of doing well? And that's sort of being honest, being organized, prepared, and clear. It doesn't really matter how it's received for me, because I know I'm following my understanding of God's will for me kind of idea, right? Or the, the, the Buddhists or Stoic, or when I say God, I don't even really know what I mean, but those ethics yeah. and if i'm following those then i feel good to some extent because i know that's all i can control and that is good yeah. speaking the truth that is good being honest that is good and then the part of me that's self-critical similar to you i didn't do a good job on this i'm that blah 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 i i just try to make peace with that it's like okay buddy you know all good thank you thank you thank you thank you like this isn't really helpful. I can't push you away. We need that part of ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, just maybe one last example would be, I heard somebody the other day say their addict or alcoholic is locked up in a jail and they need to keep them locked up there. You know, the cameras are there, this, that, because if he gets out, it's trouble. And there's, there's, I guess that's helpful for that person, although it's sort of, I, it's not a good long-term strategy hmm. because you want the addict, the alcoholic, not to feel like it's locked up. Right. Is it gonna... Yeah. It, it need, then it wants to escape. And then if the second it gets a chance to escape, it escapes. So the reference is just this internal critic in a therapy jargon 
yeah. internal internal criticism, internal critic, whatever you want to call it. We need to become friends with that. We can't push it away. We can't argue out of it. We just need to. Yeah. There's a great book, Taming Your Gremlin. It's called. Yeah, it's right there. Yeah, my therapist <laughs> gave it to me a long time ago. Yeah. And it's just that idea of like, okay, buddy, it's okay. Tame you it. know. Yeah, it's, it's like the angry animal. It's like, oh, okay, so okay. Yeah. one thing I've been doing with my dog is she still wants to growl at every dog mm. across the street and all that kind of stuff. And yeah. so we stop, and I kind of sometimes when I lean over her or whatever, I get beside her and I just pet her. I'm like, yeah. it's okay, it's okay, right. it's okay, it's yeah. okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. And she sort of she's like, oh, and then she calms down. Right. So that's that idea yeah. of like taming that beast. It's like mm. it's okay. And to honor and value the fear and the worry and the striving and the whatever, and just, it's okay. It's okay. Mm -hmm. And there is a practical side of it, which you address. Like you prepare, you do your best, you yeah. show up, you get your caffeine, you know, like the game prep still needs to happen. It's like the, the subtlety of the in-between. Does that make sense? Like, I think I'm making sense. I should stop though, because we're running out of time. But... No, hundred percent. I like the yeah. idea of accepting the internal critic, as you put it, tame it a bit thank it yes um and then do your best to move back to what you can control yes and i think that's very useful the yes. longer i sit with the critic the more i'm chatting with it as opposed to saying okay see you there thanks yeah appreciate it i you're reminding me of things i know and yeah. it's a yeah. it's a good reminder in many ways so i it keeps me sharp um mm -hmm. so yeah i think mm -hmm. maybe appreciating it yeah. taming it thanking it not fighting it yes not that's pushing it out exactly. if i push it out yes, if i suppress yes. it then yeah. i'm or if you if you like in some sense try to prove it wrong or something do you know what i mean it's yes. like that in, it's like okay fine you're right like uh, and then you not like thank you and i'm not sure if i agree right you know uh, the like yeah 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 yeah, yeah. I just know, like, like, yeah and that's like, that panic that like right. neurosis of, like yes yeah and and people like i i talk to so many people with adhd who that internal critic is just so loud and abusive and it's like and they're like i just smash myself to do the work you know and eventually right. they just like and you become the internal critic yes it and then you can't you. do anything they win yeah and then they're they're for lack of a better word paralyzed right you can't do anything now because you're so deflated and defeated and and burnt out from this internal battle right the only way to in some sense make it stop is to not do anything to make some sign a peace treaty yeah or no or like a ceasefire or uh well prior to that what where people get burnt out is they just say fuck it i won't do anything because then I don't have to hear yeah. you at all. Yeah. I'm just like, oh, I'll just quit my job. I don't want, yeah. to, I don't want this narrative yeah. anymore. Yeah. Or I'll just say, won't do my homework. But it's going to come back regardless yeah. of what yeah, you yeah. do. You it's can't going to be escape. there. This is yeah. the point of this. Yes. Yes. Okay. Like you developed a certain cast, a habit of whatever. Yeah. And okay. You develop a certain what? Sorry. So the, the quote that, or yeah. the, the, yeah. the passage you read is, if your mind has developed a certain cast, it's going to expose itself right. under yeah. all yeah. conditions. Yeah. 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 Even if yeah. you escape. If I no longer become a teacher, yeah, yeah. I'll go off and, right, you know, right. or I'll I won't talk, teach political science. I'll teach tennis yeah, yeah. in the same stuff. I'm not being useful. Yeah, 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 or, yeah, yeah, yeah. I suck. I'm, the, I'm this, I'm that. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. And then I want to quit that. I'll go, oh, that's my problem. I got to yeah, quit this. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah, I got to yeah, yeah, do something yeah, else. Yeah. And I'm yeah. same stuff. The Buddhist. Uh, Are we okay for time? Yeah. It's okay. I'll be one minute late. The Buddhist thing says, if only. Right. If only this happens, I'll be okay. If only that hadn't happened, I'd be okay. If only my parents weren't like this, I'd be okay. You know, if only, uh, nah, 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 nah. and it never ends. Right. So yeah, I guess we should stop talking. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, David. Appreciate it. It was very useful. Hope you guys found that helpful. Yeah, I hope you Don't can. Oh my to God. Comment, subscribe, like, share this. So I hope they found it useful, but I'm uh, yeah. not. <laughs> we're 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 letting go of the outcome. Yes, yes. yes. I do hope you found it useful. <laughs> though. Okay. Bye. I am very grateful that you watched to the end of this video. Please click one of the boxes to watch more of our content and otherwise have a great day. Peace out. <laughs>